welcome to those of us who braved the heat and made it here, and welcome to those who are joining us online also. Uh, we'll continue with our service as it is in the service booklet with the opening up acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to her people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly Queen, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Mother. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Kings. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you, will, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aaron. Also, you shall anoint Shehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat of Abel Melola, as present, as prophet to her in your way. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him and he was with the twelve. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I've said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. <laughs> But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiply. Then I may drink the blood, I will not walk, nor take the names of the gods on my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It's you who uphold my lot. My bad arms is close to the rest of my and you can get a good one I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. If I see my right hand, I shall not hope. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, but let the one who will see the gift. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from the fifth book of Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, 
Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a simple, single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you write and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrel, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit, the Word of the Lord. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they didn't receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the heavens and consume them? But Jesus turned <clears throat> and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, Jesus said, follow me. But this person said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I'll follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. And Lord God, may only your word be spoken and may only your word be heard. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to preach from here this morning because my voice is a little bit scratchy. And also because there are some things that I've written down that I want to make sure that I say in the way that I intended to. Um, first of all, Hank, is this your... Oh, where did Hank go? <laughs> He's adjusting something. Well, at any rate, I think, first of all, I think this is the first Sunday that Hank has been back at church right. since um, the birth of their daughter. And we ought to welcome, we'll do it at the announcement time, a, a real expression of joy. Um, because it's just such a wonderful thing. Um, but it is perhaps beyond obvious that uh, this past week has been uh, a week that's had as much moral and religious and also political significance in this country as any week in an awfully long time. And it's a week um, on which I think all of us need to be reflecting and thinking about how it is that we define our belief in God in relationship to the decision that the Supreme Court handed down, which withdrew a fundamental human right from women, millions of women around this country, 
and which sent a devastatingly destructive message about the rights of women or the lack thereof uh, to countries around the world. We work, uh, the work I do is international. I received messages, for example, from colleagues in India <clears throat> who said that this was absolutely devastating, not only in relationship to the reproductive rights of women in India, but for the status of women overall. When a country the size and the power of the United States does what has just happened here, it sends a message around the globe that women and their rights simply just don't matter that much. And in this country, we often forget the extent of the influence that we have everywhere on this planet. I believe that the God <clears throat> that we worship is a God of love and the God of justice, and that God wants all people and all creation to flourish. And it's a God, this is a God that celebrates and wants all people, women, men, non-binary persons, LGBTQ persons, to exercise godly control over their bodies. Just as society has empowered men to do for millennia. Let's make no, no mistake about that. Decisions about whether to bear a child are among the most important decisions that any woman ever makes. This is obvious. Women, as children of God, should make those decisions. Society should create a culture in which children are welcomed lovingly and cherished and when women or women and their partners are ready and prepared to offer such a welcome. Jesus said that he came to give life abundantly. This is the direct opposite of a birth at all costs mentality. It is a call to a healthy and loving society for absolutely every person. Outlawing abortion is a sinful act that perpetuates male domination and the subjugation of women. It extends the coercive power of the state into a place where it has no business being. For centuries and still today, women suffer discrimination and violence at the individual and at the systemic levels. Today, one in every six women in the United States has suffered from an attempted or completed rape. God wants a society in which the rights of women are expanded and enforced, not punitively withdrawn. If states and so-called conservative Christians are so concerned about the well-being of children, why do they not require a universal basic income for all children, something that the wealth of this country could easily make possible? Why no universal health care, no universal pre-K, no guaranteed housing, I remember well in one of the parishes that I served, hosting that we hosted a shelter for homeless people, including homeless women with their children. But I saw no conservative Christians running to, to say that this was a sin against God, that any child should have to spend the night in a homeless shelter, let alone a child in the wealthiest country on the planet. Why no welcome for children fleeing violence in other countries? Why no action on climate change, which will devastate the lives of hundreds of millions of children yet to be born? 
the anti-abortion cult that, from, that created this ruling masquerades in substantial part as a moral Christian movement. In reality, it is an extension of a cultural, legal, political movement that values the wealthy over workers, corporations over creation, Caucasians over persons of color, men over persons of every other gender and sexual identity, Christians over people of other faiths or no faith, people who want guns above everybody else. Please do not kid yourself that this movement has a claim to true Christian values. It is a grotesque caricature of the ugliest elements of white male traditionalist past. Today, in the Gospel, we read a story about Elijah passing the mantle of prophecy to Elisha, his successor. It is a story about prophets, a key element, a key office within the Bible, one to which Jesus was heir. And prophet's calling was specifically to criticize religious and political hypocrisy and evil at their own risk. For too long, from my perspective, those on the religious right have been far more committed and vigorous and organized about this dimension of Christian faith than those of us who consider ourselves moderate or liberal have been at a systematic, organized, and well-funded level. This must change. And Jesus in the Gospel today, just like Elijah speaking to Elisha, is clear that this is a priority. Using his well-practiced technique of exaggeration to make a point, Jesus makes it clear that when it's time to follow God, it's time to follow God. No excuses, no anxiety, no equivocating, just do it. Elijah is really clear to Elisha. Elijah comes and, you know, sort of does a little bit of a drive-by with Elisha and sort of chucks his mantle over him and sort of scurries away because he knows he's asking a lot. And Elisha says, wait a minute, you know, at least, you know, and, and this, this call of being a prophet, you know, Elisha understood what was at stake. He was asking for a lot. And Elisha said, you know, let me, let me go, you know, at least say goodbye to everybody. And Elijah says, all right, and Elisha goes back and in a symbolic act of making a commitment, he slaughters his cattle as an offering and the fire for cooking them comes from the wood of the plow that he was using. I don't think that God is asking any of us to do nearly that much, but I do think that God is asking us to speak up in the name of our faith over and over and over and over again for the rest of our lives, because that is not the only dimension of our faith, but it is unarguably one dimension of our faith. And we just have to do it. I'm not always comfortable doing that, and I do it professionally. But I will say that I have found very few ways that deepen my relationship with God to a greater extent than when I listen to God and Sue says, get out there and do it, or get out there and say it, and take a stand, and I do it. I don't need to tell this to all of you. I've watched Don and Eleanor, just to call out two names, stand up publicly for what they believe for decades now. And I know that the rest of us have done that on a lot of occasions also. But if there's one sign of hope on what otherwise is a very disturbing time right now, it's that as Don's t-shirt shows, after decades of activism, gay and lesbian people gained the right to basically, you know, to marry the person they love and to have basic civil and human rights. 
And this church played a big, important role in that because our pastor at the time, Mark Lewis, who was openly gay, wanted to get married and was willing to put his name out there as a lawsuit that was part of pushing the state to recognize that right. And this church didn't freak out and didn't have some overwrought, useless discussion about what did the Bible say. This church recognized that Mark loved Dennis and Dennis loved Mark and they wanted to make a commitment to each other and that the state ought to recognize that. Good for Church of Our Savior. And that's how, you know, that's the only way that we move forward. We are now at a time where this will be an open struggle for many, many decades. Things are not going to change quickly, but things will only change in the negative direction if we're silent and not clear about what we believe. I was proud a couple of months ago at the, I think it was back in January, when a highly conservative church wanted to rent space here at Church of Our Savior. And so the wardens asked me to take a look at the application and to see what was up. So I looked at what was available about this church online and they were unequivocally clear. First of all, that they didn't believe in the rights of gay and lesbian people. And secondly, that they believed that women were subservient in many ways to men. So I said to the wardens, this doesn't jive with the Episcopal Church's teachings. And they wrote the person politely and said, I'm sorry, but your beliefs are not in line with what we endorse as a church. And, you know, one step, but it's important. We are in a struggle to define a collective conscience about fundamental human rights. No more and no less. So may God give us the strength and the backbone to stand up and to do that without apology and without equivocation. Amen. Stand and affirm our faith and our trust in God by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. <clears throat> for our families, <throat> friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and for all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Carly, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all the 
been affected by this ruling this week, today, and in the future? Or have suffered from gun violence? Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. This congregation, for Hank and Shannon's new family. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of God's Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And let us greet each other in the name of Christ, those of us here, those of us online. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Please be seated. I know it was announced last Sunday, and I thank Hannah for it. Um, as in the email that went out, we'd like to welcome Grace Linda Allen, our newest, youngest addition to the church family, born at 1.04 a.m. on Friday the 17th. Uh, for the next few Sundays, Grace, if she's feeling up to it, will be making her exclusive appearance online on Zoom after the service. So if you'd like to say hello to Grace, she'll, she'll be online if, if, if she's got her morning face on. <laughs> Uh, the vestry met this past Tuesday, and with the decline in COVID cases, July 3rd, which is next Sunday, we are going to go mask optional here at church. We're going to continue to monitor the status of COVID, see what's going on, um, and may make changes on the fly. On a hotter day like today, where we have the windows all closed and the air conditioning on, we may ask you to wear a mask, so it doesn't hurt to just bring one with you just in case, but if the weather permits, we will go mask optional. Uh, we did have a birthday that passed. Pat, Pat was not here last Sunday, but she's here this Sunday, but there's no John, but that's okay, we're gonna do this a cappella. I think we can all do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy birthday to you. And my final announcement, um, with the obvious uh, ruling from the Supreme Court, there was a statement made by Michael Curry, our presiding bishop. There was a special email that went out with his message to all of the email subscribers uh, from the church. If you missed it, you can always look it up on the National Church's website or see me afterwards and I can always email it to you again. Thank you. Uh, I, want, I want to say everybody uh, to have a, a, a good day for Pride because we, this is Pride Month and uh, we have, could have done any Sunday. This is the last Sunday of June. There's a big parade in Manhattan which is expected to uh, attract millions, maybe. It's going to be on two channels starting at noon, I think. Look up your guide. It's going to be on uh, Fox and ABC. Uh, to find out what they're doing. But, uh, most of all, I, I want to, to mention, like, and to reinforce what you said, that, that we are officially, in all respects, an inclusive church, and the people in our society who are gay and, 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 and the whole wealth of, of 
relations to and depict every type of sexual orientation and so forth. There are people just like us. There are people that exist in every family. Every gay person has a most you know, most likely has a non-gay mother and father. You know, so they're 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 amongst us all. We should love them all. And in, in particular, I'd like to call your attention to page uh, 304 and 305 of the Book of Common Prayer, which is the baptismal covenant. And in the in the part of the baptismal covenant, a number of questions are asked, and and the foundation, because this 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 is about the same same age as the as the pride movement is is the, the, the question that says, will you seek and serve God and all persons loving your neighbors yourself, and you have all said many times, I will with God's help, will you? Strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help, is the response. And uh, amongst the prayers that you have, you might open this occasionally and, and read this through and remind yourself of these pledges that all of you have made and should continue to make and to, to love everybody who needs the love. And at this particular time, the people that uh, are have sexually expressing different than we are. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. okay. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering and sacrifice pleasing to God. Continue on the <clears throat> service booklet on page five. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, 
to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he gave given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, O my God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food, 
in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God's peace and presence, which far surpass our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Christ our Savior. And the blessed of God Almighty, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of all life, be with you now and always. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 663 in the hymnal, verses 1, 2, and 3. Enjoy the music. <laughs>